Well, where is he? Oh, don't tell Tracy that he's... Be right back. Oh, and welcome back to Fanta Fridays, where we proceed to check out all the fan that are not playing related. Why? Because Legend Breaker is busy doing something else. Let me face it, my face it, my face, my feet. Oh, uh, hi, Trixie. Um, you seem to be a little bit miffed that I'm not in the studio right now. I... No, 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 Trixie, no, no, put me back, put me back at this one, play. <sighs> Sorry, guys, but do you blame me? We've been waiting... We Kingdom Hearts fans have been waiting 13 years for a new numbered installment. 13 years. Do you realize what has happened in that amount of time? I've had the chance to fall out of the fandom, fall back in love with the show, fall out of love with Naruto, fall back into love with it. Naruto has come to its end. Bleach has come to its end. Dragon Ball Super came out. Silver Crystal came out. Three presidents have gone by since then. Bush, Obama, and Trump. We have seen many changes within the technological and archaeological landscape. We have seen different governments change. We have seen new phases take its place, like, say, Pony and stuff like that. I fall in love with Pony. Like, Hara has had his chance to get 500 episodes. Red vs. Blue have to have to get one of its best anniversary movies out there. Basically, by the time Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, a lot of crap went down. That was 13 years of development. I graduated from college twice within that time. My little brother graduated college in high school by then. Kingdom Hearts was most of his childhood. The Kingdom Hearts was mostly my high school years. So, yeah, let me say this without any type of irony. Kingdom Hearts has been Kingdom Hearts 3 has been a long time coming. And now that I have it, I am loving every single freaking moment of it. Now is to skip this week's Phantom Fridays and never come back. You will stay here. <sighs> Fine, Trixie. Now, uh, let's see what we got here on the fake ways. Oh, Jaeger got something I do suggested. Oh, well, might as well find something fun to do. So, please stay here as we here at the Tree Berry Memorial Library and proud to present The Nymph, The Witch, and the Agitator by Margaret Esmeralda Note Spelling. Enjoy. The Nymph, The Witch, The Agitator. By Margaret Esmeralda Note Spelling. That, that's not a screen name. That's a list of names. Right. Chapter 1, only chapter. I see and glared at the 14 large baskets in front of her. She never understood why they could just fob off laundry duty on some of the lesser notes. She recalled Sigmar messing something about trying it once and not working out. What's so stupid? If they could build and maintain a city, certainly they could handle washing clothes. And nothing else, he was certain that Dimex and Roxas could sweet talk her minions into doing it. Secretly, she thought that the dust had finally drawn the line at laundry. To do anything else, steal, kill, offer themselves up as keyblade fodder. But for some reason, they wouldn't do laundry. And if dust refused to do it, the higher nobody certainly weren't going to do it. So that meant the organized season had to do its own laundry. Not that Larsen blamed them. She certainly didn't want to do the laundry of 12 men, raising from 15 to King Onar, knew only knew how old Zenmus was. Why she had to do it, she wasn't sure. She must not have pissed anyone off lately. Zenmus never entrusted such necessities as cooking and laundry to people with a vendetta. Was this why Mara Luxa and Axel never had to do it? They were always in a fight with someone or another. That also explained why Zal did always cook. No one was dumb enough to pick a fight with him. Where the hell was Demix? He was the one who usually did this. 
He generally got cleaning chores. What with being a war element and all. Probably on some missive God knows where, being seized by God knows what. Well, if she had to do this, lying about it only meant you had to do it twice as long. She wasn't going to do it alone. Her problem was, who? As number 12, she didn't have a whole lot of official influence. Of course, her champion and eyelash batting had been known to sway but even vexed at times. When that didn't work, threats of electrocution. She doubted it would convince any of them to wash the clothes of the eleven other guys. There were only two people she was technically give voters to. Roxas was out. Only a light type supply of sea salt ice cream could convince him to help her wash and sort the laundry. And then only maybe. A big superior special little key plate bearer meant she could weasel it out of anything. Then there was the actual factor. The key of destiny. Assuming that by some obscure chance she did get Roxas to help her along too. Was there anything more awkward than doing laundry with your ex? They left Nominee. She wriggled her nose with distaste. Said Miss, and were a display of complete idiocy. I thought that the two girls would belong instantly. He gone at length of being glad that Larkseen had finally had some female companionship. A lot of other garbage that only proved to Savage Nymph that said Miss got all his information about women out of a book. Nominee, fortunately, was not so close. One look at the savage nymph and she stayed out of the way. At least she tried to. Normally, Larkseen went and couldn't stand the girl. She was too timid and quiet and hardly ever looked for that sketchbook. But she did bother to look out from it. It was often at Mariluxa. Larkseen hated that. Mariluxa, who had found the same rainy afternoon that Axel had found Roxas, had taken at what first seemed a kind of parental concern for the small girl. The true nature of the relationship was closer to that of a dragon guarding a precious treasure. He treated her like a princess. A captive princess, but a princess nonetheless. He said it was only natural, seeing how she was a nobody and one of the princesses of heart. Arxie hated princesses. She hated the way Naminé fascinated the graceful assassin. She hated the way he compared her to a blooming flower. She hated how delicate the girl was, that promise of rare beauty. But worst of all, she admired the girl's manipulation. It was like she who had coined the phrase, Memory Witch. It surprised her to know that Nominee had adopted it as her title. Whether this was defiance or an attempt at supplication, she didn't know. Hmm. You know, I can't help but notice we haven't mentioned that other girl. Oh, that other girl. I'm not sure. What she didn't know was that Mary Lux had put a great deal of effort in visiting a girl. He was the only one who cared for her. And then the girl had stuck out in the night and found Demix. Mary didn't know why she bothered. The melodious nocturne was just another dragon. Chetler to Mary Lux, perhaps, but no less dangerous. Still, the nocturne had made things easier. He prevented Mary Lux from spending too much time with the witch. It encouraged her to associate with Roxas. The boy had become the star of the witch's world instead of the assassin like Shreena had proved of that. Hmm. Lexing stared thoughtfully at the basket marked 13. Roxy said, quite to crest at a little witch. Normally he was quiet, pensive, moody, and above all lethal. However, when Naminé was around, he went all to pieces. He all flushed and flustered, not to mention clumsy. He was a complete innocent matter of, for lack of a better term, the heart. This made Sarah Rexis with the witch quite irritating to watch, since he invariably did something stupid like falling down the stairs or dropping his ice cream, or one extreme case tipping a whole pan of stove-top macaroni and cheese into Superior's lap. Lexi's lips stretched an evil grin. Now what kind of reaction would Roxas have to see his crust folding his other underwear? Ooh, this was going to be fun. Nominee stared intently at her sketchbook. Which one? She pondered as she flipped the pages. Which one of these sketches is worthy of canvas? Her musings were interrupted by a knock on the door. She looked up as the door opened and gulped when she saw who it was. Good morning, nominee. Lysha said with her tired grin. I'm not interrupting the artistic process, I hope. Er, uh, no, nominee lied. How are you this morning? She asked timidly, hoping that the woman will leave soon. 
Well, it does so happen that I need a pure help, Namine. Like said, grin. My help? The girl asked, confused. I said, could possibly want her for anything nice. Doing what? Laundry. Oh. Well, that was a minor relief. Laundry wasn't anything fun, but at least the Sabbath sniff wasn't making her do anything bad. Okay, I'll help. She said, putting down her sketchbook. Splendid. Now when he revised the nothing bad assessment was he saw the 14 huge baskets. You mean we have to do all this? She couldn't keep the dismay out of her voice. I should not see why I direct you down here, she said. It'd take me a week to do it by myself. Why take a week anyway? Now when he complained. It'll take all day at least. Where do we even start? Sorting out everything, of course. Marcy said manifestly, colors, whites, delicates, anything that has to be pre-treated. Then it's just an assembly line. Now I need gloomily. We'll do ours first. I should continue. That way, our clothes don't have to go in all the smelly voices. No. The girl giggled. As they begin, now I need something. Lexi? What is it? I'll cut their stones the official organization gear. Oh, the nurse tried. All that leather, so Superior sends it out to specialty cleaners in Traverse Town. I see. A little while later. Ooh, you weren't kidding about smelly boys. No. Is this blood? Most likely. Or what? Considering that side search, I don't think we want to know. What makes this kind of stain? Gunpowder. Gunpowder? How do you get that out? All of Axel, Axel's stuff has scorch marks. Well, it's Axel, isn't it? Frickin' Pyro. Archie so muttered, damn it. What's this junk all over Demix's pants? Some kind of poly, I think. Not any answered. She was staring hard at a pair of Axel's blue jeans. Well, they're a uh, lady in blue blue once. What does he need that for? Niv complained. It's the best he puts on the instruments he makes. Well, it's a bitch to get out. No, rest in this. The girl sighed and came to jeans. Axel's really hard on his clothes. Nah, he's got some nice stuff he takes care of. But his play clothes? Yeah. He's almost as mean to them as he is to Vexen. Huh, down that garage of his, tinkering with his bike. Life Street snoring. Remember how he always paid more attention to the bike than to her. Ew, Axel Grease. Now any wine. Why say Blake did it burst out laughing? What's so funny? Think about it. Hmm. Ew. A light came on. Now any street dropping the pants, face turning a brilliant of crimson. That's only mean life seemed laugh harder. She ended up having to sit down on the floor until she calmed down. <laughs> Axel Grease. I had to remember that one. She great wiping her eyes. She looked up to see Naomi staring in the pants with a look of absolute horror on her face. She cracked up again. I don't see what's so funny. The girl was nearly sobbing. Oh, have a spy with you. I spent an entire year reading an insane deconstruction of every single trope of your fandom. In existence. <sighs> Two years ago. So do not talk to me about growing spines. It's nothing to get upset about. And if staff, for stars, I know this is pants you never know. They're coated with oil and incident grease. In a second, you deal with much worse every month. Not any better left. I guess you're right, but still, you. Well, if you're still going to associate with Y chromosomes, you better get used to it. Still icky. Don't be so was about it. It's not like contact poison or anything. I'm extremely unhappy. I see Glare. What gives? I thought you read Shonen I Magna. Well, the stuff I buy never goes into the messy part, alright? The sounds did roll her eyes. The messy part is the fun part. 
Ooh, what kind of wit is so bashful? <laughs> As it turned out, she wasn't quite that bashful. She's so cute. She giggled fondly a pair of rocks of sorts. They had little heart-shaped keys all over them. They were also fairly new, Larson remembered. She even with Axel and Roxas on that shopping trip, when Roxas picked them out. They were his two favorite pair. Well, her, Axel, Roxas, and... Who was that other one? A wicked idea entered the nose mind. Yeah, they're a bit too cutesy for Roxas. Axel bought them for him as a joke because of the king. He could have them if he wanted. He hardly ever wears them. Only when he's got nothing else. That's why there's hardly any wear on them. Now they stare at the chores. It's very tempted. What would I want them for? She asked. Oh, as pajama bottoms. You know, to sleep in. I can't believe I said that with a straight face. She thought to herself. Are you sure he won't lie? Positive. Come on. Take the beat. Well, as long as you're sure. Oh, and he said with a happy smile, she places a fold of shorts on top of her old laundry basket. Sky. Several hours later, the girls sat back and admired their handiwork. It was done. All of it. Impossible as it seemed. Well, that's a beastly job well done. Now, we just have to deliver it. I said, sigh. Time for the next phase, she stated to herself. Nominee could only manage one basket at a time, so Larkson gave her one of the ones that went to the lower floors. While she took the ones that had to be carried further, as soon as the girl disappeared through a portal, she made an adjustment to Roxy's basket. Very wildly, she left. They met up again as they came back to the laundry room for their own baskets. You did a good job, Nominee, Icy said. I was surprised to find out, despite her ulterior motive, she has admitted. The girl blessed. Thank you. You know, the wife said casually, you come out hang out in my room tonight. Nominee was startled. Like she never invited her before. Come on, it'll be fun. Does you and me, she coaxed. Besides, don't you get tired of the boys sometimes? Well, after having done their laundry, she was thoroughly fed up with them. And I haven't been at all working with Larkspeed today. She even offered to take Ross's basket to his room when she saw how tired the witch was getting. But to think of it, the nymph only became savage when she thought Mary's Luxo was paying too much attention to her. Well, okay, I guess. She answered with a timid smile. Perfect. I'll get some sweets and we'll meet up after dinner. She winked at Nominee. You can wear your new PJs. Nominee giggled as long as she took her basket and left. Maybe this would be fun. She hoped so. As she went to pick up her basket, she noticed a small stack next to her. It's a pile of rocks and under shirts and sorts. She could tell from the little thirteens printed all over the top pair. She shrugged, assuming that Lexi had folded them and forgot to put them in the basket. Put them on top of hers. She could take them to Roxas' room before dinner. So, how's... you know? Roxas asked his best friend as he walked down the hall. You're going to pick up Nominee for dinner. I know what. It'd be difficult. Don't give me that. As Roxas said irritably, you know what I'm talking about. Give me a hint. That thing you don't want me blabbing to the castle in general. I might find his way to Lavar Luce's ear if you don't stop being a weenie. Axel pouted. I thought you didn't care. You said you didn't want to know. I do care. He insisted. I... Just don't want the triple X version. Of course, he added slightly. According to Luxor, you two haven't made it past PG yet. I'm so sorry. What does he know about it? He knows that you've been sharing your room for a week, and neither of you have been walking fun. Fox is grinned evilly at the look of blatant outrage on Axel's face. Why that? Note to self. Bird number X's favorite deck. The pyro snarled, Roxas sniggered. Foxes! The key of destiny looked down the hall. Nominee was just coming out of her room carrying something. Hey, Tiny, she said. I was on my way to your room. Roxas felt his cheeks warm. My room? How come? I helped Roxy with the laundry today. 
See the guy these when she took the rest of your clothes out. She held the bundle out to him. Roxas stared. His underwear. Now when he was holding his underwear, he was suddenly plunged to his very own rosy-hued hell of humiliation. Beside him, he heard Axel staring. Naminé was still easily holding the clothes out to him. A look of concern on her face. Are you okay, Roxas? You got mad very quickly. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, perfectly fine. He gulped as that's the bundle from her unresisting hands. Probably a pair in the process. Roxas? Oh, uh, thanks! He yelped. Now he fell into a portal. Naminé picked up the fallen swords. Roxas, you dropped. He was gone. A pair. She physically confused him. I still sleep against the wall laughing. <laughs> it's the karma. He stared. Gotta love it. Naminé was staring at the abandoned shorts. You have blue gold stars all over him. Don't worry about it. I still said talking to them from her and stuffing them in the pocket. I'll give them to her later. Let's get something to eat. I said was good to her word. She had pretty good taste, Naminé had to admit. Chocolate mousse. Was she pretty sure Nymph stolen from Nemex? And the chick foot said it didn't induce nausea. We should do that sometime. Like said, said pointing at the screen. Do what? Kill one of the guys twice? She laughed. <laughs> There's hope for you yet. I mean the midnight margaritas. But we could kill one of the boys twice if you like. No one ate for him. But it's too young for alcohol. Don't be such a goody goody. Glaxy story. I hate that. Besides, a little taste that won't kill you. It's not like you've never had it before. Yes, it is. The girl protested. What do you think was in the eggnog Glaxor made last Christmas? I'm going to horrified. Oh, stop it. It's just a little nip. So you and Roxas would fall asleep qu quicker and not get scared for life. Trust me. Things happened at that party that would have scarred you. Like what? The woods asked, fascinated by the forbidden. Luxor had a major winning drink in Zerith poker. Pun intended. Who was he playing against? Luxius, Zaladin, and Zygbar. She thought for a moment. Remind me to think, Luxor, she said finally. Roxas, calm down. She set me up. She planned the whole thing. Demix always does the laundry. Why else would she do it? Because maybe Superior told her to? I saw a haphazard. Roxas was beyond listening. Look, Roxas, she probably just may nominate help, but like she said, Axel is Lark's reign. He had a point. Axel had to give him that. She probably set it up just to get out of Roxas' skin. But he knew how the nymph work. This is just the first two. If Roxas had calmed down, he was going to get kicked in the butt by a second. Roxas sighed. If it really bothers you that much, they could be virgin margaritas, okay? She's braiding Naminé's hair, mostly for the heck of it. She looks cute with pigtails. Okay, the witch said, sounding relief. Now then, what's so the boys should be killed twice? Mm, I don't know. She giggled. <laughs> Who do you think? Roxas, this is a bad idea. Trust me on this. Yeah, it was a bad idea for a black streak to mess with my underpants. I still groan. It wasn't very often he had to convince Roxas not to do something. Usually it went the other way around, and he was the one setting people up. He wasn't used to talking people out of bad ideas. <laughs> What about Axel? I owe him one for dumping me. Well, you're cheating on him anyway. Well, I haven't figured out who he left you for. It's been bugging me. It was you, wasn't it? Now when I got horrified. Of course not. Where did you get the odd idea? Oh, don't be so gullible. I know it's not you, she laughed. But I can't help but wonder who he's gay for. Oh. Seems kind of odd, though. Never thought he'd swing that way. Why? Well, Axel Kins hates being dominated. That's the other reason he left. Nominated looked confused. Dominated? Don't worry too much about it. He say so. Do you know who it is? The Nymph grinned evilly. So you're certain that Nominated knew? Axel would have told Roxas, and Roxas would have told the witch. 
to which looks uncomfortable. Come on, Marcin says sweetly. I'll keep it a secret. Why just made me promise? She protested, please. I promise. I'll keep it to myself. I won't even tell my looks, she wheedled. I promise. All right, Marcin relented. Marcin was mad enough as it is. Speaking of what, she should be here any minute now. The bar, door banging open. Nominee shrieked and jumped. Marcin smirked. Nymph, get out of here! I'm going to- What the? Nominee? Marcin, what's going on? Marcin didn't answer. He was staring at Nominee. She was sitting next to the savage smooth. Very big A smear of chocolate in the corner of her mouth. She was wearing a loose t-shirt and- Are those my- mm, Yeah, Marcin said he went mine, because he didn't like them. His favorite pair. Nominee was wearing his favorite pair of boxer shorts as pajamas. This was something his brain could not handle. I'm sorry, Roxas. I didn't realize you wanted them. Lysing grinned. Roxas, are you okay? The witch asked, and she looked rather panic. Here, Nominee. Take those off and give them back to Roxas. You can wear a pair of mine. Ugh, Roxas moaned. What a pleasant biological moment. When the blood gun decided what direction to rust, then his eyes rolled back, and he folded up gently on the floor. Oh dear, Nominee whispered. Is he alright? Nothing a cold sour wind fits. We should help him. Oh, Tweedledum will be right here shortly, she said confidently. Roxine, see? I still stared at the heap of key plate fire on the floor. What did you do? Well, nothing. It'll be fine once the blood decides to go back to his brain. I still stared hard at her. Then looked at Nami. Oh, I see. You're evil, you know that, right? Part of my charm. They will smile prettily, patting your eyelashes. I was snoring and hot with the over his shoulder. I didn't know charm was the same as devious. He says he walked down the room. Always oh, have to have the last word, doesn't he? Lexi and Lexi, he closed the door. Turn back to Nami. Well, you're right. So what's green? That was fun. Ah, silly, sweet, short. And all it does is remind me the only thing I get annoyed by the organization of 13 members is that we spent so little time with them. Barely even got to know, know them. To see how they were, how they bounced off each other before we inadvertently had to kill them. But this just reminds me of the power of fanfic. And that was one down. Now there's more to go. I'll see you all next time.